and I haven't recorded it yet. Yeah, I hope you can see it now. Sorry about that. So this is the picture I was talking about. Uh, this is my primary server. There's a principal server and this is my mirrored server. And uh, I would like to set up a database mirroring for the database one. So the prerequisites is just to have uh, identical SQL version on both the servers. And uh, the witness server is an optional. If you are expecting an automatic failover, that means if your principal server goes down or if your principal database goes down at any any time in midnight or weekends, you want, if you are expecting your SQL server to take care of that failover, then you require a witness server. So witness server will provide you a automatic failover if you don't have a witness server then the only option is one of the DBA has to manually fail over the database onto the other instance so when a failover happens what exactly uh, does it back in is the roles or the roles will get swapped so as of now you can see the server one will be a will be taking part as principal and my server B that is a server 2 will have a role called mirror and when a failover happens irrespective of whether it's automatic failover or you manually fail over the database so when a failover happens the mirror database will change its role to principal and it comes online and the database that was in principal server it will go into mirror state and it will not be accessible for the end users so when a failover happens the users or the application that is still trying to connect to this database will will throw an error saying that you can't access this database so we need to go back to the application team and we need to explain them saying the database has got failed over onto the mirrored server so they need to connect to this SQL server to access the database. And in, in synchronous commit, having said that, the log cache data will be first pushed to the secondary server and uh, the data will be committed on the mirrored server first. And once you're done, your mirror server will send an acknowledgement back to the principal server saying that I have done my work. Upon the acknowledgement, the principal database will commit the transactions and the result will be sent back to the user or application. And in case of asynchronous commit, the log buffer will be signed parallelly to the secondary server, that is a mirrored server but the only difference is your principal database server will not wait for any acknowledgement from the mirrored server it will just send a copy to the mirrored server and that's it it's work done and your principal database will commit the transaction and send the result back to the application team and the automatic failover can only be possible with synchronous commit if you are if you, if you want an automatic failover, then you should set up with synchronous commit. There's a question, can we mirror any number of databases? Yes, except system databases, you can set up database mirroring on all the user databases. If you have 10 database, 10 user database on the instance, then if you are required to set up database mirroring, yes, you can set up database mirroring individually on all 10 databases. So are we good for a demo now? So any questions? All right, so let me go back to the SQL instance. Okay, this is my 
principal server and this is my mirror server and in principal server uh, what is the database I picked on the day okay let me create another database on principal server I'm creating a new database I name it something called I name it as SharePoint the database name and we need to ensure the recovery model is full and then you can click OK the database will be created on your principal server so the database is ready and let me create a new table have created a table as well in the SharePoint database so now I will be taking a full backup and a log backup of this database so I'm trying to take backup onto D drive SharePoint dot underscore full dot BAK and I would, I would be taking a log backup change the backup type to transaction log and create a new file right so we are done with the full and log backup now I have to restore that SharePoint database on my mirrored instance so right click on database go to restore add the full backup file This is a full backup file. Okay, it is recommended to keep the same name. And you can go to files and just set relocate and go to options. And now you have to select restore with no recovery. One thing we need to remember is always the mirror database will be in restoring mode. You cannot read data from the mirrored database full backup has been restored and now I have to restore the log backup on top of it and again with no recovery option can go to options and select restore with no recovery okay the database has been restored now now we can kickstart the database mirroring configuration so in order to do that connect to your principal server and then go to your principal database right click on the database and go to task then you can see mirror and click on configure security go to next and the first is include witness server so it's an optional 
if you have witness server then you can go with s yes. if you don't have witness server you can go with no and uh, having said that witness server is required if you are expecting an automatic failover if you don't if you're not expecting any automatic failover then you can still go ahead without witness server so as of now i have only two instances and i don't need any automatic failover so i'll be selecting no you can go on to next and this is a principal server instance and uh, this is my principal server instance name and this is a port number the log cache from primaries from the principal server to the mirror server will be transferred through this port and both the servers will be talking to each other with this port and the default ports are 5022 and 5023 and this is about the mirrored server instance so we need to select what the mirrored server is so it is my sql 2012 and you can go on to next and this is service accounts you need to provide the service account of your principal server and service account of your mirror server you can just read out here for sql server accounts in the same domain or trusted domain specify the service accounts below if the accounts are non-domain accounts or the accounts are in untrusted domains leave the text boxes empty but in real time we would be having the domain accounts and with the trusted with trusted domains so in that point of view you need to go back to your principal server and uh, uh, check what service account the sql services are running you can check by going into the configuration manager pick up the SQL Server, SQL Server service account information and just paste it here and the same thing for mirror but now I can skip it because they are non-domain accounts and they are not in a trusted domain and obviously my both accounts are running on single machine but in real time you need to provide the service accounts for principal server and service account of mirror server and you can go on to next and then finish this is going to set up a database mirroring from server from this server onto this 2012 instance and we say start mirroring yes we just need to check the status here it's not yet configured so it's still trying to do some sort of things okay it says this is a very generic error message it says like cannot be reached or does not exist check the network address name and the ports so probably what i expect is whatever the service account where the services are running i don't have a login for them so probably that could be the case why it's failing So let me check the service accounts for these two instances both the sql instances are running on one service account it's rmvp underscore sql so i will create a login on both these instances Okay, you can go on to next for now I'll be giving a sysadmin but it's 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 uh, it's not really required we need to just provide a connect connect permissions to the other instance but uh, if if you if we provide a sysadmin to make things easy to avoid the issues but in real time we try to restrict this access probably to do that you might go you might need to go on to securables and then uh, type search and then 
all objects click ok then login servers you need to select that particular login what are the login we are going to create now wind uh, where it is login this is a server yes we need to select this server and then if you come down you can see connect yeah you can see connect sql so you just need to grant this one it should still work so the same thing i will be creating a login on my mirror server So for now, I'll be giving a sysadmin. Okay. The logins were created now. So go back to here and try to start mirroring. Yes. Yeah. You can see the status now. It says synchronized. The databases are fully synchronized. That means the mirroring for SharePoint database has been set up and you can just click on OK and you can go back to your principal database and you can see for SharePoint within parentheses you can see principal dot synchronized that's the role it was taken up and if you go to the mirror instance and for can refresh and check the mirror server the status shows as mirror synchronized restoring so by looking at this you can easily identify which server is principal line which server is mirror now what I do is we know that uh, the primary server this is my principal so users will connect to this instance So I'm a user and I'm trying to create a new table. I have already have I already got a employee table in this database, so I'm trying to create a new table which I say TBL underscore test with a single column with ID. Okay. This is the one change I'm doing and the other change is I'm trying to insert insert data into employees table okay, there's a question how can I check whether they are in synchronous or asynchronous commit and like uh, I have too many mirrors is there a quick way to know yes you can check those things you have to use a system table that is select star from sys dot database underscore mirroring you can browse to this table and it will give you the information of the database so this is the database and you can see what is the status whether they are in synchronized status or if it is synchronous commit then it will show as synchronized if it is asynchronous commit then it will be showing as synchronizing the difference between those two synchronized is for synchronous commit synchronizing is for asynchronous and even you can check uh, what is the mirror server instance name you can get it over here this is the instance name and you can also check what is the principal and what is the mirror and whether they are in synchronized or asynchronous and the other way is you can right click on this one and go to task and then select mirror 
it will also show you here the operating mode it says high safety without automatic failover synchronous high safety what it mean is it is synchronous commit that means it's high safety always your mirror database will be identical to your principal database it is because in synchronous commit the first data should be committed on your mirror and based on the acknowledgement your principal server will commit those transactions so always at any point of time both the servers will be identical in data perspective and the the other option is the first one is high performance asynchronous asynchronous is determined as high performance it is because if you set up asynchronous your your principal database is not going to wait for an acknowledgement from the mirror server so obviously you will your sql your principal database will execute the query whatever it is getting and it will respond back to the end user quickly it will not fail it will not wait for an acknowledgement from the mirror so that is the reason it is also called as a high performance and the third option is disabled and why it is disabled is we don't have a witness server so if you have a witness server and if you include in the setup then the third option would be enabled and what it says is high safety that is synchronous commit with automatic failover so the automatic failover will only be possible if you have a witness server so I have done two changes over here one change is I have created a table and the other change is I have inserted a record in employees table so let me check the record Okay, you can see there's a one record now if there if something goes wrong with your primary server so obviously if you have any witness server included over here then a failover happens but in this case we don't have witness server so we need to manually fail over and the other case would be your server is still up and running but there are certain requirements where your windows team would like to apply some security patches on the server and it might take around 30 minutes to one hour to apply all the security patches and once the patch has been applied they would like to reboot the server so probably it might take around 45 minutes to one hour so we can't uh, ask our application team saying there would be around 45 minutes downtime you cannot access the business might not be agreeing with that but at the same time this the windows team it's a very crucial update that need to be applied on the server so as a dba you you might be asked to pro, to to provide a solution where the update has to be applied on the server but at the same time there should be very minimum downtime your business will not going to wait for 45 minutes so for these scenarios the high availability will be used so for the exact scenario what we do is we fail over this database onto our mirrored instance before the security patches apply and we ask all our application users to connect to this instance for a next one hour and once the primary instance been updated and rebooted we fail it back so how to fail how to fail over a database from one instance to the other instance so what you can do is you you always need to connect to the, your primary database right click and go to task and then mirror and here you can see a button called failover you can just click on this and it will fail over the database so before I click on this one I would like you to notice the status over here so this my my principal server has got a status called principal synchronized and my mirror server status is mirror synchronized restoring as soon as I click on failover 
and confirm it the roles will be swapped so let me refresh the first one guys can you hear me Yeah, can you hear me now? Seems there is a network issue here. Okay, all right. So have have did a quick failover test. So you can refresh the databases here, and you can see the role got changed. Earlier it was showing as principal synchronized, but now it was showing as mirror synchronized. And you can go back and check the old mirror refresh the databases and you can see it it's now says as principal synchronized and at the same time this database came online now let us try to check what are the changes we did in previous principal old principal it is now a mirror we have created a new table called tbl underscore test and then we have inserted a record called John so let us check whether the data being mirrored onto this database. So open a new query. So let us try to check the data from table. You can see the record has been mirrored onto the other side and we also created a new table right however it's a blank table you can see here a new table has is also created on the database so this is how we perform a manual failover there's a question from money if you're trying to install some security patches on the principal server and if you manually fail over the principal server and redirect the application team to the mirror server wouldn't both principal and mirror or on different versions now no I'm, I'm saying security patches at windows level i'm not saying about the sql versions every often every month microsoft releases some security patches and that is for os level and it's not for sql so the other way to fail over just before I have shown you a GUI to fail over a database from one instance to the other instance the other way is to write a query so what I do is now I do some updates on this instance you can see now the SharePoint database is acting as principal on SQL 2012 instance right so I have connected to SQL 2012 instance here so I will create one more table on this database I say table double two okay have created a new table refresh the tables and you you can see a new table got created so now what I do is I will fail over the database back to its previous instance so to fail over the database just before we have used a GUI but now I would like to show you the query because obviously for interview purpose uh, if you try to use these queries the interviewer will be impressed Let's use master go sorry you need to use command called alter database database name set partner failover so this is a simple command you need to execute on your principal server so as of now SQL 2012 is my principal server so I'm executing the query on SQL 2012 
so the failover has been issued and uh, you can refresh the databases and you can see the database is now back to mirror and go back to the first instance and the database back to principal. Now check whether the new table whatever you have created on test 22 is available and it's there. So this is how the data will be replicated and uh, if in case you don't have an automatic failover then this is the way we try to manually fail over the databases. So any questions? And one more thing is in order to monitor how, how the data is transferring onto the mirror side and uh, what is the latency and uh, how far your mirror database is behind your principal database. So to check all those things you can right click on your principal database and go to task and then you have option called launch database mirroring monitor. This is a monitor window for database mirroring. It will give you some sort of things like uh, okay there is some issue with this one. Okay, this first is my principal and the second is my it should be my mirror so I just need to refresh it. Yeah. So they are synchronized. This is a principal and this is a mirror and this left side block is for principal and the right side block is for mirror. So in left side block it will give you some sort of information like unsent log. The data that is still in your principal and yet to push onto your mirror. So if you have any data at your principal and uh, not yet pushed onto the mirror, it will show you here. And the next is old unsent transaction. When was the last time the transaction was mirrored onto your mirrored instance? That's the time. It, the recommended is to have a zero because we always expect the data to be mirrored onto the other side immediately. So we don't want to be it showing like a minute or two minutes. But obviously if in your in your real time we used to, I mean we get uh, very huge transactions coming on your principal. So you might see some latency over here like okay, the last unsent transaction was maybe probably two minutes back. But still, there should be some changes should happen here. And we need to ensure the unsent log should be zero. And time to send log. If you have, let's say going back to our previous example, uh, probably my mirrored server was down for some reason. And it was down for an hour. And during that one hour, users were connecting to the principal server and they have inserted around 10,000 rows. So those 10,000 rows were available at your principal because we have set it up asynchronous, right? So those 10,000 rows were committed at your principal but waiting for your mirror. So once your mirror server is up after two hours, what are the transactions that were not sent? It will be showing here. Maybe probably assume those 10,000 records in data, they are around maybe 150 MB. So it will be showing here like, okay, 150 MB data has not yet sent. The unsent log is 150 MB and the oldest unsent transaction would be, it shows as two hours. So from last two hours, the data was not being replicated, was not being mirrored. And the next is it will show you the estimated time, how much time it going to take to push that 150 MB of data to your mirrored instance. And then it will send, it will give you some rough estimation like, of how much speed the data is pushing onto your mirror server. It just gives you a send rate, I mean under what speed the data being pushed from the principal onto the mirror. And on the mirror server it, it shows like unrestored log. That means the log as came from the principal onto the mirror server but not it, not it committed. So how much data that is and how much time it gonna take 
to commit those transactions so that information will be provided here and the third is the current restore state how fast the restore being happening on your instance so this this will give you the basic information like how your SQL Server database mirroring is working and you can also see a history tab on right side you can just click on it and it will show you the previous history like how your database mirroring was performing and you can go to last last day the maximum you can go to up to last one day or the probably the last thousand records so any questions with the database mirroring and the restrictions with the database mirroring is we can have only one copy of the database let's say my business requirement is okay this is my principal server okay this is my mirror server so I'm I'm keeping a copy one single copy on this instance maybe my business requirement say says that okay uh, you keep another copy in a different instance we need two copies it's not possible with database mirroring you can always keep one copy of the database there's a one restriction and the other restriction is your mirror database will be in restoring mode you cannot access this database there's a, another restriction but the benefits the data will immediately mirror to your partner database and you can have automatic failover those are the benefits you can see and the other important thing is the always on I hope you all you are already you might have heard the term always on is a new feature starting from 2012 it always on is nothing but an enhancement to this database mirroring the database mirroring is going to discontinue from SQL 2016 version Microsoft decided to stop database mirroring starting from SQL 2016 and in place of database mirroring Microsoft has introduced always on and that has been introduced from 2012 and what are the limitations or restrictions I said those are all resolved with always on but I will take you through the always on setup when we are on the topic so that's it uh, from database mirroring side so if you don't have any questions we can the next high availability we're going to discuss is about the log shipping but I want to keep hold on this one I don't want to start the log shipping today itself because it creates some confusion the the architecture would be different but the terminologies or the setups we use maybe it, as it is a first time for you it might create some confusion so I don't want to start it the same day so I, I would stop the class today for now and I would request you uh, to try and configure database mirroring because it's much more essential in all the organizations uh, probably they I mean I can say around 30 percent of servers I mean 30 percent of organizations are still using database mirroring so unless you do practice on these database mirroring setups you can't answer the questions probably it might be easy to understand today but uh, offline week it will be tough for you to recall the things so I recommend you to please try to set up database mirroring uh, definitely I would uh, share the videos by end of today so please try to so please try to uh, configure database mirroring and uh, if you have any questions or any issues please drop me an email with the screenshots of the error message and I will try to reply you back but uh, I would like everyone to set up the database mirroring on their instances and they should be in working condition
okay guys thank you very much and uh, i would like to close the call now and we'll be back tomorrow